Hi, welcome back everyone. This is Battery Insights by Electrified Veronica, episode number three. You guys were asking me about an overview of battery simulation and modeling techniques. So I am super happy to address battery simulation, virtualization and digitalization trends in today's video, very high level. As you can see, I am sitting in my kitchen today. This setup is actually inspired by NVIDIA's amazing keynote speech from last week, where Mr. Jensen Huang informed the world about their technologies, artificial intelligence, simulation, GPUs, and especially for the automotive sector about the digital factory twin of BMW, where they virtually test, optimize, and plan the vehicle production process. This was super inspiring to me. My name is Veronica Wright. I am a social entrepreneur and consultant for battery lifecycle management. I did my first quantum mechanical simulations in the field of organic electronics around eight years ago in my master thesis. And since then, I have progressed, you know, from the atomic level up to the battery cell, module, pack and vehicle level. And today I want to share my experience with you. So let's get into it. The areas that I see for battery simulation are tightly connected to the concept of the battery biography. So let's remind ourselves on this concept. The battery biography describes the life of a battery from birth, you know, extracting raw materials, manufacturing the battery cells and integrating them into applications for the first life to rebirth, which means you use the very same battery cells, but in a second or even third application to reincarnation, which happens once you recover the materials from recycling and produce new batteries. Throughout the battery life, scientists, engineers, and even you as an electric vehicle owner are making use of computer models to help achieve certain goals. So we create digital or virtual representations of a battery structural materials, of the cells, of the systems, of the vehicles, and even whole cities with charging infrastructures to solve real world problems in the virtual environment. So the power of simulation is really endless. Let's look look into it. So what I want to do is classify these battery simulation and modeling techniques according to the physical size of the domain. So from nanometers in the atomic level, so really looking into the microstructure and the electrochemistry to millimeters in the battery cell level up to centimeter for the system level and then meters and finally even kilometers if you think about connected cars and vehicles on the road. Interestingly, once batteries are not good enough for the application anymore and we start disassembling them back into the individual parts and start the recycling process, we finally come back to the chemical processes at the molecular level again. All of this follows the battery biography and it's kind of a circular story. So let's look a little bit deeper into these individual areas. First one is atomic scale modeling. So probably the smallest size you want to start from is the atom and the molecular level. These are really microscopic simulations of the materials that the battery cell components such as the anode, the cathode, the separator and the electrolyte are made of. Typical modeling techniques are, you know, quantum mechanics, simulation, density functional theory, molecular dynamics, Monte Carlo simulation and electrochemical models. One of the main goals of these simulations, in very simple words, is finding the perfect material combination with the perfect electrochemical properties for the holy grail of batteries. You know, we're looking at kinetic and transport on material level, diffusion of lithium ions, interface properties, aging effects on microscopic scale. So what are the electrochemical effects behind batteries losing their capacity over time and many more things. Once we played around with the materials that electrodes, separators, electrolytes are made of, we combine them into battery cell by stacking layers on top of each other. So this is, for example, a cylindrical cell that, for example, a Tesla would use. This is a very good example of a pouch cell, so completely different format, shape and energy density. So this is a typical cell level. 
Common simulation techniques on cell level are electrochemical models, equivalent circuit models, finite elements, so FE models, EIS, impedance spectroscopy modeling, but also more and more machine learning and data-driven models at that level. Overall, one of the main goals is thermally, mechanically and electrically optimize the battery cell and its design. Where are the hotspots in the cell? What happens to the layers inside of the cell once you damage the cell? You know, safety relevant simulation and also aging modeling, which would in this case be parameterized from cell testing. As a next step, we take several of these battery cells. So in case of Tesla, these are really thousands of these little cells and integrate them into a battery module or a battery pack. Now I think we really arrived at a scale where you know what you look at and not only the chemists and physicists get excited about. Typical modeling techniques here are three-dimensional finite element and computational fluid dynamic simulations, empirical models, again equivalent circuit models, also lump mass models, really depends on what you're looking at. So here we really follow different kind of goals. So first of all, it would be optimizing the overall system, you know, the cell to cell connections, the cooling system, safety. So really thermally, mechanically and electrically optimizing the whole pack, be it performance simulations, thermal runaway and propagation simulation. In general, you want to speed up your development process by also replacing physical tests by virtual ones. Hey, we made it up to the application level. So now we really built something that we or you really need and use by integrating the battery system with some other components to build either, you know, an electric vehicle or an energy storage system. Modeling wise, when we're up on the vehicle level and we focus on batteries, we mostly use 1D lamp mass models, not so much 3D anymore. So we reduce the complexity and go back a little bit to the 1D world. Now it's really about integrating the battery with other components such as the e-motor, the thermal management system, the inverter and optimizing the powertrain as a whole. Also what you see more and more in the battery world is real-time digital twins where you combine virtual models with physical components on the test bed. So for example you want to run a real battery with a virtual thermal management and the real world driving conditions. So this is really a level and sometimes this happens already at system level where you include lots of real world environmental conditions to your system. I would say the biggest level before we leave Earth is the connect level. So now we're really talking about batteries in different applications connected with each other. For example, a Tesla electric vehicle fleet. So this could be several cars connected on the road or, if, you know, if you have this huge battery energy storage systems, all the batteries in these tons of containers connected with each other. And you're really using the data that comes from the batteries to parameterize models at this level. So it's a lot about real time simulation during operation. It's definitely a lot data driven, but also combined into hybrid models. If you include physics, it's lots of digital twins, machine learning, artificial intelligence and a huge trend at the moment. Some applications that you might be familiar with is estimating the driving range and a state of health of electric vehicles or, you know, predicting failures and the battery lifetime during operations or even optimizing routes and charging behaviors within a fleet. I think overall there is also a huge trend in using this vast amount of data that we generate in the in-use phase for our next battery technologies. In this level, I would also consider the digital twin of a production site, like the one we have seen by BMW and Nvidia, or for example, also a test field where several hundreds or thousands battery cells or packs tests are running in parallel. And also here, you can use all the data to parameterize models and help improve the development and the overall process. Thank you for your interest. This video was really meant for giving you a big picture and an overview of battery simulation, virtualization and digitalization trends. Let me know which areas you are missing or which common modeling techniques and approaches are not in there because I really want to create a very complete picture over time. So this is definitely work in progress. 
Hey, I'm back to NVIDIA. If you didn't watch it yet, I recommend starting at minute 13 and I promise you will get goosebumps two and a half minutes later. Have a wonderful day, a great week, enjoy and talk to you soon. Ciao!